What's going on guys, this is part one of my coverage of the One Shepherd Leadership Institute Spring 2022 training semester at Bravo Company in West Virginia. In this video, I'll be highlighting the semester's land navigation course and the situational training exercise, or STX. For those students that completed the basic warriors course, they will likely attend a land navigation course in a subsequent semester. Land navigation is a perishable skill, and in this day and age, people have become far too dependent on GPS systems. Warriors must still be proficient in land navigation using a map and a compass. GPSs often lose signal, and many civilian GPSs can be tracked or jammed by a peer adversary. In this course, students will be introduced to the basics of topographical map reading using a military-issued lens attic compass, pace count, dead reckoning, terrain association, and much more. The first day of land nav course is generally classroom instruction with some practical application at the end. All right, if you're holding your compass, remember you got your strong hand, you're cupping it, you got your thumb through there, you bring it up to your cheek, you're wrapping your weak hand around it, you should be able to see right through your siding wire, correct? Find a spot out there, pick a point out in the distance, see your little wire, right? Your siding wire. All right, without taking your cheek, your compass away from your cheek, you should be able to see down into the dial through your uh, lens. Does everybody see that? All right. So 4440, let's say, right? 4440 right here. And then we're going up. So 47, how high are we going? One, two, three, four, five, six, and about a half, right? So 4440 and 4765. Okay. As you see. Right four, and up. That makes sense. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten grid squares, right? Mm -hmm. That's a hundred meters per each grid square. The second day of the training is a full-blown navigation course in which the students are provided with multiple different grids in which they have to plot and find the points without the assistance of instructors or the use of a GPS device. Following the completion of the final land navigation course, Students would then combine with the students from the Warrior Basic Course and the Light Leaders Course for a culminating event, which is a clandestine night link-up mission. For this mission, the students that attended the Light Leaders Course would be placed in the leadership positions. The Land Nav students would be placed into roles where they'd be the ones plotting the route and navigating the patrol on the actual mission. And lastly, the Warrior Basic students would make up the bulk of the rifleman billets within the formed squads. For this mission, multiple different squads would be inserted at different parts of the AO. Each squad would be tasked with linking up with one another in the dark, with an enemy op for conducting routine patrols in the area. Here you see the students conducting rehearsals prior to the kickoff of the mission. The students that went through the light leaders course were taught the importance of things like rehearsals and pre-combat checks and inspections prior to stepping off. In addition to linking up, part of the patrol's task was to place sensors at four corners of this old dilapidated house that was on their objective. All the squad's link up went fairly well, but one thing they didn't anticipate was for an enemy Humvee to pull up right in front of the objective with Op 4 walking all around it. Comrade, you still have that night vision? Can I borrow it? Something don't look right. Thank you. Strong. Do you see a light over there? Over there, behind that tree. That is a light, or am I crazy? What is the light doing out here? Although the students were briefed to avoid contact with the enemy and fire only in self-defense, one of them opened fire on the Op 4. Contact! Now One Shepherd is designed to be a safe place to fail and learn from tactical missteps. It's always better to make those mistakes in training Life's the real deal. Dead. In this case, once the students opened fire on the Op 4, when they were supposed to use stealth to employ the sensors, a beehive is thus stirred, and the result is now that they would have to fight their way out of the situation because the Op 4 is alerted to their presence.
Following the completion of the training mission, the students were gathered in a troop tent for an AAR to discuss the good, the bad, and the ugly of the mission. Well done. Cool. Right. Okay. What of uh, any other issues, like prominent issues that we need to talk to you about tonight? Issues, something that did not go right. I heard one. Land navigation. Overall, kudos to the land nav people. We've heard several people compliment it, but I've also heard a couple times where people said, yeah. Before you step off as a land navigator, I'm really talking to my land navigators here tonight, right now, um, but before you step off, you look at the map and you say, I've got 800 meters to go. I've got two kilometers to go, whatever it is. And you do something like this. It's called Terrain Association. And it's Dora, Dora the Explorer. I'm the map, I'm the map, I'm the map, right? I'm gonna go over the hill, cross the river, and to grandmother's farm, all right? What they're doing, what they're doing, and I used to do this all the time, they're going, your, your, your compass people, your you know, land navigators are going, okay, so I got 1,200 meters, and right around one-third into it, I better cross a creek bed. And then maybe two-thirds, I'm going to cross this big orange fence that you all caught and talked about that no one ever found, right? Um, and so that's, but that's a bit of the problem. You're like, whoa, we all expected a 12-foot orange fence. I don't know what the hell you guys were looking for, but all right, but a 12-foot orange fence. Can I interject on this one, Don? And, and, all right, where's our fence? So, they you okay. it. your squad to test the mission to follow out, follow down, uh, come in, because that was the perimeter of your AO. Mm -hmm. Did I ever say the word fence? No. Right. This is why you have land navers in the dark. You know your distances you need to cover. If you go a few hundred meters and you expect to find a fence and you don't, you still know where you're at. There's just no fence there. Maps are constantly changing things, guys. You can have a map that shows a tree line, and when you get there, have a big open field. You can also show up in a helicopter at the perfect LZ you picked out, and have jungle for nothing but miles. Okay? This is the importance of Nightland Nav. Okay? Because when you get to, I've gone 400 meters and I haven't hit a fence, oh shit, because by my count, that's about 350, you should hit a fence. That is an oh shit moment. All right? Same down south, guys. This little box here, there's not much there to tell you except a house and a really crappy barbed wire fence that at night you might only find by getting tangled in it. All right, but if you do your pace count from your drop off, you know you can't go too far. The next morning, the students that had gone through the Warrior Basic course were officially warded with the One Shepherd patch and officially welcomed as part of the One Shepherd family. Next on the schedule would begin the Situational Training Exercise, or STX. This semester's STX would be covering spoiling attacks, infiltration and exfiltration operations, as well as clandestine link-ups. But once again, I want to say that even in the traditional um, challenge and password that we use on the front line, there is that last part. It's like, okay, you, this is me, I'm coming in on my, you know, and so I know they're going to call me somewhere between two or 300 meters out, 400 meters out. Yeah, uh, you, this is me, and come on in. And so they come on in, and they get within a certain distance, and I stop and I say, I mean, using my voice, I say, halt, football, penis. <laughs> and then there's that last part where we say, right, advance to be recognized. Advance to be recognized. I want a visual recognition, right? And so that's very important that we want that. And so even when the, I say, I, I see uh, Jason, and I'm like, hey, Jason, Jason, Jason. Oh, hey, Chris. Good, we've recognized each other. Now, what, J what Jason wants to tell me is, hey, Chris, I'm coming in. I got two guys with me. He's telling me the number. And I'm going, cool, come on in. Particularly important at night, but even in the daytime. 
I don't want to think, ah, the SS is following Jason. You know, and then light up his two guys. So he's going to advance to be recognized, which tells me, hey man, I got, we got me and two others. There's three of us. Ah, cool. Following the classroom period of instruction, the students would be given practical application over what they had just learned by being tasked with conducting a mission where they'd be infiltrating into an enemy-occupied area and subsequently linking up with the other units at a rendezvous point. I want you to break your squads into at least fire team or into fire team levels, right? So you got a fire team, your squad leader will join one of the other fire teams. So this is two squads. You're going to have four different infiltration teams. Got it. Okay coming in and we're going to like send them off at different angles and they're going to come in as best they can. We got a brief, so just stick to your fire teams, I'll yell for you when we're, we need to do the next step, alright? My intent is that we do not fire a single shot. So, we're going to divide this, the team up into two and from, from there divide them up even further into groups of two from there on. So essentially, for example, these are two coordinates that are the primary rendezvous spots. Oh, okay. So uh, first and second squad, your primary rendezvous spot is uh, the coordinates are standby. It's 44, 45, 479. That's 445, 479. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Hour and a half. Any challenge people. password number combos? I'm guessing it's here. Okay, so five. Five. five is a number. Yep, cool. Five number. Um, if it all goes to shit, um, you can use uh, each, we can use each other's um, primary positions as alternates if it does go to hell. Yep. Okay. Uh, okay. Into the, uh, Get in the tree line! Hey, lock and load. This would be a fairly Get successful back. infiltration exercise with most of the teams making it to the rendezvous point. As with all training evolutions at One Shepherd, the AER would follow. All right. Having said that, I will now have the Blue Four Commander um, talk to us about his mission. What is your mission? What's your intel and all that? We were given a mission that there were two rendezvous points that we had to get bodies on. We were explicitly told to divide our squads up into two fire teams and have them all in various different directions. Uh, the intel we were given was that there were two uh, rendezvous points, two possible alternatives, fragged the way, and that some of us would be inserting by then, then that got fragged into everyone getting inserted by then. Uh, we were told that there would be uh, trolls and there was a heavy presence at MPs. Alright, so that was their, their intel. What was your commander's uh, intent for, I heard you, what, what commander's intent did you get? Uh, my commander's intent was that we uh, get into the rendezvous point without a single shot fired if possible. That's where I practiced. Self defense was allowed, and I heard a lot of self defense. <laughs> <laughs> The next day, the students would once again be tasked with conducting an infiltration into an enemy-occupied area. The mission would have them infiltrating into separate squads and conducting a link-up at the old house in the AO. Once the link-up had been conducted, a simulated explosion would be sounded alerting the enemy to their presence. The squads would then be tasked with exfiltrating out of the AO. Instead of breaking back up into smaller elements, however, the patrol leader seemed to opt to push his men back in mass which would put them in a head-on collision with the large op element moving towards their location.
want to ask this. Did you, how, how to go on the objective? How many teams show of hands? How many people got to the objective alive? Two full squads. squads. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 Wow. All right. All right. So that looks like a little over half. Yeah. Not bad, right? Not bad. All right. Excellent. Um, how many people made it back alive? Well, we didn't make it back. We got picked up. <laughs> that counts. <laughs> at First index. Was. At index. How many the boys people? at? All right. Less. <laughs> half as many that made it there made it back alive. All right. Just something I wanted to see that so we can all see the big picture and stuff like that. Okay. Last day of the STX would focus on spoiling attacks. Students would first receive a period of instruction on spoiling attacks, and then would be tasked with conducting a mission involving a spoiling attack. Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning. All right, guys. So uh, this next segment, we're going to talk about spoiling attacks. But before we get into just exactly what that is, I'd like to take a, t a minute to talk about some of the things that we've already either done or depending on what side you, you've been on for these exercises, had done to you, all right? So the, uh, the patrols that we were doing yesterday morning, all right, what did that involve? You're, uh, you're in your TAA, you're behind your, your line, right? Okay, so let's say that you've had some intel, no matter how you gained it, we have a lot of ways to get intel. You know, we got reconnaissance, we got drones, you know, we've got a lot of um, intercepting, you know, radio operations. Well, let's say you've got, you know, the enemy's way up here, right? They're behind their line. They're behind there. So this is us, this is them. We've got intel that maybe they're moving some troops in and they're massing in force. They're massing in force or something. We know that we, they've, they've, they're starting to, they have uh, armor. They've got multiple units that are that are coming up. And our reconnaissance says, hey, they're, get, they're getting ready to do something. And we know that they're about to make a, a large push. We know that they have an approach, likely avenue of approach, this direction. We know they may have a likely avenue of approach this direction, right? And that's what our intel says, that this is probably the way that they're going to have to move some of these units through there, right? So that, that information comes back to us, and we say, okay, all right, well, we're not going to sit there and just wait for it. We need to get out there, and it, like, they, like they said, it's in the name, spoiling attack, right? So you're going to get out there, and you're going to say, okay, no, 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 we're going to go punch you in the face. We're going to punch you in the face first. So what you're going to do is you want to you want to disrupt that movement. You want to stop them from their plan, just as they were saying, right? Yeah. Just so real quick, tell us what you just told me. Okay. This is the AO. The enemy is attempting to get an unknown rendezvous here. We're going to attempt to do a spoiling attack around this area. The general plan is to have a CP somewhere in a central area. We're going to divide off the three grids into uh, squad one, squad two, squad three. That is not finalized. Uh, we're going to send screening patrols. And when we find them, we're going to decisively engage them if possible. Uh, we're going to try and preserve combat power around here uh, so that we can have a quick reaction for us. Okay. We know that's an approach for us. We know, you know they're about to be here. We, we do not, but process of elimination, just because of yeah. adjacent units and landmines everywhere, yeah. uh, that kind of limits where they could be coming from. Brent lied to me and told me there was none left. Oh, sorry, guys. Either way, one way or the other. No, this box is where you guys are playing defense. You got bad guys coming from the outside of your box. He asked for area approach, and I said, no. What other gear you carry? As far as getting out, I think you got Trees, these trees, those trees. So like we're looking at approximately. Yeah, and I, I suggest you guys take half your combat power, make an LPOP here, make an LPOP here for squad one, something like here and here. Like this, this is a, yeah, this is a rough idea. You guys have complete directive over how you want to control your lines. Our plan, and my commander's intent, is to have screen patrols and LPOPs and a designated CP with QRF to react to any breaches in the line or any attempts at feints. 
I will send out whatever makes sense based on the squad leader's assessment of the situation of how many guys I should send from the quick reaction force. You already have designated areas, squad one, or approximately this area, up to the squad lead regarding uh, what the LPOPs will be placed because of the micro terrain. I have complete confidence in your guys to designate where they should be. Screening patrols should be running rear of the LPOPs. Rear of the LPOPs. Let's have let's have Dalton's team follow into the middle. That way the largest crew is gonna be possibly in this area. And then we'll have the other two respective teams dropped off on either end. That's 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 the vibe I'm getting from this. Alright. Load order. Load order. Oh, you know yeah. what? Oh, ground fire, ground fire. Take a little flag. <laughs> All right, we got this. We got you guys. Oh, fast. Remember your training, and you will make it back alive. <laughs> <laughs> Drop down just a bit, just down. down. Lower to the altitude, slow the vehicle down here. Oh, that's going to get the stalling speed here. Nope. Ah, okay. All right. Hook up. Hook up. Stand in the door. And right. Right. I'd say we go that way. Okay. All right. Let's do it. Good luck, guys. Good luck. The guys fall close to the door so they'll take two to take out the truck. Oh, this room now. That's it guys, it wraps up my coverage of the 2022 Bravo Company Spring Training Semester in West Virginia over land navigation and the situational training exercise. Stay tuned for part two of this video where I'll be highlighting the final culminating event of this semester, which was the field training exercise or FTX. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to leave a comment. Fighters, Face me, salute, face your opponent, support arms, salute. Watch camera, watch camera. <laughs>